Hi, my name is Melissa Packham. I'm a freelance brand strategist currently based in Brisbane, Australia. I've been working remotely as a freelancer for just about a year now. And one of the biggest challenges I've faced definitely has to be with uh, navigating time zones. It's been super fun having to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning or stay up until stupid o'clock at night uh, to have Skype calls of meetings with clients and, and team members. But that's all part of the fun. One of the other challenges I definitely have to say is having to log in and re-log in and prove my identity to various online services. As I travel around and log into different things, they think I'm hacking my own account and so I have to prove my identity and, and try all over again. So that's been part of the fun as well. Hey there, I'm Richard Latour. I'm a solopreneur, digital nomad. I've been nomading for years and I've been living internationally for decades. And the question I have today is, what's the biggest challenge you face as a remote employee? And to me, the biggest challenge is just having self-control and being conscious and aware of where you are and what you're doing. Um, in an office, there's routines and structures built in to make you productive. So there's managers breathing down your neck, there's weekly meetings, there's monthly status updates, there's your paycheck coming in, lots of things. When you're working remotely, you don't necessarily have any of these things. Instead, it's just you, your computer, and that's it. So you have to learn really quickly how to be conscious and aware of who you are, where you are, what you're doing, what your plan is. And this is actually the biggest challenge because not having a network and not having a, a, a structure around you that's built in to make you work is really hard for some people and it takes a lot of time to get used to. So for me, every day I try and make lists and try and wake up and figure out where I'm going to you know, work today and how I'm going to do it. Um, sometimes I structure it the day before, but I also have you know, routines around taking showers and all sorts of other things. So generally, be conscious of where you are, try meditating, and be your own manager. And this challenge can go away, but it's perennial, so good luck. My name is Pauline Chen. I work as a support engineer for the past five years. Within those five years, I've been a digital nomad for the past three years. I'm currently on a sabbatical. The biggest challenge I face as a remote employee is missing out on those water cooler conversations. Um, the company is a company of 200 with only five fully remote employees. So there is a lot of uh, internal jokes, water cooler conversations, things that are referenced to those conversations on Slack. So it was difficult in the beginning because I felt like I wasn't part of the group. So in order to conquer that, I had to actively reach out to my colleagues and start conversations, talk about um, even just news, uh, posting things regularly on Slack so you can have a conversation, a water cooler conversation within the digital realm. Hi, my name is Amna Shmeem. I'm a writer and SEO strategist. I've been a remote worker since 2006 and a digital nomad since October 1st, 2014. This week I'm in London and I say this week because I travel pretty fast lately. Um, so the biggest challenge I faced as a remote worker is not anything to do with the work. Like I love what I do, so I don't have a problem getting motivated or being focused or any of that. But what I have a hard time with is getting people around me to understand that I am actually working. Like I know that it's really cool that I'm in Cyprus near a beach or in London or in Thailand or wherever, but I'm actually working. So I can't always go out and hang out. I often work weird hours. I I work, like I actually work more than eight hours a day on average um, between my actual work and my personal projects and the things that don't make money right now but might one day and then the things that are never gonna make money but just make me really happy. Um, I don't have a lot of hobbies, I work a lot and I love it. Like my work is my hobby, I love what I do. But just because it feels like play doesn't mean I'm actually playing all the time. And taking a Tuesday off to go hang out is something I can do, but that means I'm going to work on Saturday. And that um, that calculation doesn't work for most people. They seem to think because I'm wherever, I must be playing all the time. 
which makes me wonder how they think I'm affording my lifestyle um, because I have not won the lottery. But if someone would like to give me a winning lottery ticket, I will take it. So yeah, that's, that's the hardest thing is not work, it's play. <laughs> Hi, my name is Peter Schrader, and I do digital marketing for a company called Schoolkeep, which is an online learning management system. I've been working remotely for approximately four months now, and my biggest challenge with working remotely, at least initially, was setting up a structure to be productive. So how I combated the problem um, was we started as a marketing department using Scrum methodology, which is traditionally a programmer's methodology to approach program or to approach projects. And we started applying it to our marketing department and um, collaborating in a Trello board. So initially, when it was really hard to kind of collaborate and keep track of things and get status updates from people, um, really became relatively seamlessly relatively seamless through this um, scrum methodology, which is easy to set up and it works really well for us. I'd say the biggest challenge to working remotely is also one of the best parts about it. So it's, you know, obviously the nice things about working remotely are uh, the freedom to kind of keep your own schedule to an extent or, you know, go out to the beach on a Friday, <laughs> Friday during the morning. Um, and all of that's really nice, um, but the biggest challenge with it is what you sacrifice for that. And what you sacrifice is, um, well, I found it to be work culture. And because you're not in the office, you sort of are missing out on some conversations and some kind of subtle moves and changes that happen, you know, within the sort of the workforce themselves. You're not really there for that. You're not there for the inside jokes. You're not there for just the kind of shooting the breeze, kind of water cooler conversation. So I'd say that's probably been one of the hardest bits. Not being able to tell if I'm really part of the workforce family or if I'm just a guy that calls in every other day for a meeting. Hi, I'm Sandhya Ramachandran. I'm a multimedia storyteller. I'm working as a remote content, social media and branding consultant. I've been working remotely for about two years. The biggest challenge I face in being a remote employee is making a connection with my team in the initial days. It's not easy to connect with everybody considering that you don't meet them personally. But what I have found to be useful in this case is to give it some time. I also make an effort to connect with each and every team member over a call in the first few weeks. And this has helped me to get to know them and has also helped me in settling in new environments pretty quickly. Hi everyone, my name is Ashmi Patella and I left my startup in San Francisco in April to start working remotely around the world. I help startups on marketing, growth and investor relations and I'm currently in Dubai on a layover on the way to Cape Town. So something I struggled with in the beginning was how do I create the sense of belonging and connection as part of a remote team? It's really hard and I think even before you think about the tools and processes you use, you have to think about the types of values you have in your own life and the missions you want to align yourself with, the types of people you want to work with. Um, for me, that meant working with early stage startups and founders I believed in who had amazing goals that we could strive towards um, no matter where we were around the world. I work very closely with them day to day and this type of environment you know, makes me feel like I have an impact. And it's gonna be different for everyone. But first, even before you apply to a bunch of different remote opportunities or go for a bunch of different clients, I think you have to be really clear and align their companies with your own life values and kind of your own mission for your, your life and the impact you want to have in the world. 